Good morning. Today we're going to be going over Bowler Studio and what it is and how it works. So the first thing you're going to see is the splash screen. The splash screen will give you uh, information about how it's loading, whether it got stuck on something and if it uh, loaded everything correctly. Once it finishes, you'll see uh, the Bowler Studio main window. Now, this window it consists of a text window, a terminal, and a 3D window. The 3D window is hidden to begin with, but you can open up the 3D window by clicking on the window menu. Window menu, and good your lab. Cool. So that'll open up the 3D window to the right. Now, Bowler Studio is also built on a docking system, which means you can pop out windows by grabbing the top gray bar and dragging it out of place. Once it's out of place, you can click on that top gray bar again, and then using your mouse, you can select where you would like it placed. So, to put it back the way it was, you can put it back like that, or you can put it back to the side of the text window, or below it. Let's put it back to the side of the text window, where our 3D window is a little bit smaller and shares real estate with the text window. If you put it in the center, it'll show up as a tab. Now we can switch between them. Look at that. But to begin with, we're going to put it back the way it was for the rest of the tutorial. Cool. So now, now that we know how the windowing system works, how to undock and redock things, let's take a look at Bowler Studio itself. Now. It's an integrated development environment for robotics and computer-aided design. What that means is you write code, and it, that code is both control for your robots as well as the descriptions of the shapes of the robots themselves. Now, the way this is uh, implemented is we have a couple of supported programming languages that can be run directly from Bowler Studio. Uh, the programming languages are Groovy, which also include, includes Java as a subset, uh, Clojure, and Python. If you write code in these languages, talking to the framework that we have here, uh, your, your code will work in Bowler Studio. Cool. Uh, so, the first thing that you see when you open Bowler Studio is the tutorial. The tutorial is basically a little website. This website contains bits of code, that show you how to do things. Uh, everything in, in Bowler Studio is going to be documented using spike documentation, a fully functional example of how to use something as the documentation of an idea, how to use that thing. thing. Uh, so the first thing that we see here is our text-to-speech. So Bowler kernel dot speak activates the text-to-speech engine, and you just pass a string of what you'd like it to say. So let's hear what it sounds like. Welcome to Bowler Studio. Cool. So, what you see here is blobs of code that are in the tutorial website, because you're looking at the tutorial through Bowler Studio, are downloaded and made available to run. Now let's imagine you wanted to change this text. All you have to do is hit the Make a Copy button. Bowler Studio will call to GitHub, fork, the git repository that was used to execute the code and then open up your copy of that code on the disk. So now if I run this, welcome to Bonus Studio. I have the text, but I can change what it says. Hello world. And all you have to do is change the text and hit run. Hello world and it will execute your code. Now, let's imagine you want to save your changes. You just hit the Publish button. Publish button will bring up the Commit Message dialog, which will ask you what did you change. And why did you change it? If you hit Publish, it will then push your code up to GitHub otherwise known as actually saving it. 
if it hasn't been pushed to GitHub, there's no guarantee that it's actually been saved. Cool. Now, let's take a look at some of the other uh, examples in our tutorial. Now, the next step in the tutorial just describes what I told you, what uh, the code is, where it lives, and how to make copies. In case you want a text reference, here you go. Now let's see a couple other languages. First up is Clojure, which is a Lisp. If you like programming in Lisp, well then here's you can write scripts in Clojure. Your lucky day. Python is also available. You can write scripts in Python. Although the Python is a little bit slower. You can write scripts that create shapes. So here is an example script that creates a whole bunch of shapes for the 3D window. Now the first time you run it, it's going to have to download a bunch of things. But after the first time, it'll, it should be a lot faster. There you go. A bunch of stuff in the 3D window. Look at that. Great. Next up are mobile-based devices. So in Polar Studio terms, mobile-based mobile -based devices are the robots. Any robot is going to be described as a mobile base. A mobile base can have uh, a couple different kinds of limbs, steerable or fixed wheels, legs, or arms. Any of the limbs that are attached to a mobile base will be described in one of those four categories. Things like heads and tails are sort of uh, more generally described as arms in this case. Um, you'll forgive the nomenclature overlap a lot. But what you can do is run code and load some of our example robots. In this case, it's going to load the Carl the Hexapod uh, robot. Now you can see here we have our uh, robot configuration window, which shows us how uh, the robot is configured. And you can see here in the 3D window, it's running some of our example code. In this case, for the mobile base devices, it makes it walk, then it moves a leg around, then it moves individual links. There's the link going. Great. Now, in the Creature Lab, uh, you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can reload the CAD for the robot. You can look at the configuration space, which is what we see here, all the link lengths and limitations. You can run a walking cycle. And if you click this little radio button here, you can generate CAD that implements the configurations that you've created. So now it's going to go through and create the CAD for the robot. Good robot. Now as it goes through one link at a time, it's using the configuration that we gave it to generate 3D printable parts. While that loads, we're going to take a look at another part of the tutorial. So, once you have a mobile base that you can walk around from code, boy, it might be nice to simulate that robot to find out whether or not the robot uh, that you've created will interact with the real world in any meaningful way. So, this tutorial is going to load the robot that we just created and dump a bunch of things on its head. Let's see how it does. You can see the first thing it's doing is loading all the dependent files. 
and starting the simulation. All right. Definitely not the most efficient robot I've ever seen, but it certainly, certainly seems to walk. There you go. Now I can take direct control of the robot like I have here, or I can allow the script to have it run through a fitness cycle. So this is how you would get a fitness function if you were doing artificial intelligence work. Now, this script is designed to run until you stop it. Once you hit stop, it will throw an exception and open up the file. Good robot. Well done. Now, Bowler Studio can be used to interact with hardware. Since this tutorial is not using a webcam, uh, we're just using ScreenCap. We're not going to go into any of the hardware so section at the moment. So we're going to skip over hardware, and we're going to skip over Arduino. But you can see here, you can program an INO from Bowler Studio directly from its Git location. So if, it, if the Git example exists on GitHub, you can push that code directly to an Arduino as part of your program flow. Now, because everything is based on Git and all the files are separate, one might wonder how you build more complicated structures. So, here's an example of using scripts to return objects and using them as functions. So in this case, we have a script whose function is to create a bevel gear, or rather, a pair of bevel gears that are matched. So when we run this script, it's going to call this git repository and this file. Oh, it's already done. Wow. <laughs> Zoom right in. And it's going to pass in these parameters, and the return will be an array of objects. You can see two of which which we return are the gears themselves, and the rest of the values are uh, data about the gearbox, information that you would use to place the axles for these particular gears. Cool. In this way, you can also use Git, of, uh, Git as a file system. So, for example, we're going to store an STL on this git repo, this branch, and this location. And we're going to get back from GitHub, uh, from Bowler Studio, a file. Welcome to Bowler Studio. Cool. After it loads the file, it calls the git script run, which calls the hello world script from earlier. Living in the future. Now, let's imagine you're writing code, and you'd like to know a little bit more about the objects that you're dealing with. Groovy has some pretty nice features for getting that information. However, because this isn't uh, the best IDE in the world, it doesn't show up in line. However, you can print out all of the functions available on a given object. You also can throw exceptions, which will bring the file up in the Bowler Studio text window. Cool. That's all for this video. I'm going to bring, bring this up later with more detail on the CAD system. Thanks for watching.